Hi, this is Nathan Tusher with PKPD Associates, and this is the overview lecture on Phoenix WinNonLin and how to use uh, the Phoenix application. So when you open up your uh, Phoenix application, this is the screen you're going to be greeted with um, after it opens. It looks like a big white space with not much information. And this is going to appear very, very different to all those users for the past 15, 20 years of WinNonLin. Um, and it's been quite a challenge to understand how this all actually works, but I'm hoping through this course you can learn how to get comfortable with the new Phoenix Win on Lin interface. And so um, I'll sort of describe in this lecture uh, the different pieces of uh, Phoenix interface and how to use it and how to get comfortable, and then subsequent lectures will learn how to actually do analyses that you want to get done in this software package. So it, Phoenix is broken into two spaces. There's an object browser, and I like to think of this as uh, somewhat like a file explorer where it shows all the bits and pieces within a project um, in one location in kind of a hierarchical or folder uh, layout. And then the right-hand side is an action area where it's a workspace where you're either going to have uh, sh show... Uh, a layout of uh, the the project and the, and the different interactions that you're going to have and objects, or uh, you might have specific uh, details that need to be filled out for projects. And so um, you can adjust this. If you look here, you can make the object browser wider, um, or you can make it smaller um, as you want. You can look at uh, any information or history behind what you're doing down these tabs down here. Um, but right now it's quite boring. There is uh, nothing there. So what we're going to do is first is uh, load a project. So I'll go in here to load a project. And uh, we're going to use the example projects from uh, Phoenix. And so what I'd actually like you to do um, is you, you'll probably need to uh, go outside of Phoenix. And you're going to go here into Windows, Program Files, x86. Um, you'll have to come down to Farsight, Phoenix, and then you go into Application, and there's this folder called Examples. And so you're going to want to copy that, and then uh, come back to your Documents area, and uh, I've pasted it in Farsight Projects, and you can see there uh, that I've pasted it. And once you've pasted it into your uh, Farsight Projects, I want you to browse to that and to Examples, and go into Projects, Wind on Lin, and then open up this Example 1 Multiple Profiles. I'd like to use these uh, example files because everyone has them. Uh, should be readily accessible uh, to you, and uh, you can practice with them. So you're going to open that up, and what you're going to see here is now you have an open project. So a project is a single file um, that contains all of the objects inside of the project. So previously with WinNonLin, you had several different files that you had to save, a, a workbook file, a, a project file, you had to save a graph or, or chart file. Um, and so it, it was sometimes difficult because you had multiple files that you had to keep track of. Uh, one of the advantages with Phoenix is that it keeps track of all of those things for you. And so when you have a project, this one's called Multiple Profiles, that's the name of the project, you can see that there's a, these folders that contain information. So there's a data folder. There's a little plus because there's actually data in there. Um, you can click here and you can see there's two data sets in there or worksheets. There's a code folder um, and code is going to hold any kind of uh, textual code that you might have. So for example, ASCII code from an old uh, Win on Lin analysis project, or perhaps you have R code to do some statistical analysis or SAS or non-MEM or any other textual code that you might have can be inserted here. Um, and it handles it as different pieces of code. You don't have to, you don't have to maintain separate files. Tables are exactly what's described. As you create tables, you can place them in the tables area, and then you can keep all of your tables together for ease of reference later. BQL rules or below quantitation limit rules is a, a new feature of Phoenix when non-lin that allows you to sort of uh, systematically handle values that are below the limit of quantitation in your data sets. Documents is a place for other documents, non-Farsight files that you want to be included in the 
uh, project. Um, so examples might be a statistical analysis plan that's in a PDF or Word document. Perhaps you have some notes to file for your analysis that you want to include. Those would be here, um, or SOPs, or maybe even contact information. So any kind of document that you want to add in here, a PDF or a Word document, or even uh, you know, even a PowerPoint presentation might be able to be loaded here. Then there's shortcuts as well, um, which, which aren't used as much. And then finally, there's the workflow. So the workflow is actually the collection of objects um, that are going to perform analyses or actions on your data. And so you can see the workflow here uh, expressed graphically, but you can also see it kind of hierarchical um, listed here. And the hierarchy is based on when they were added. So the first thing that was added was an XY plot. Then there was a non-compartmental analysis module and then descriptive statistics. And so they're shown here. And what you can see here is you can actually move these around and they have little arrows connecting them. And what this is saying is that there's external data sources that connect to the XY plot. Then the external data sources also go to this non-compartmental analysis object. And then this non-compartmental analysis object feeds into the descriptive statistics. So you can see the flow of data for external sources might flow along here and see these XY plots aren't related at all to the descriptive statistics. You can also look at these objects more in depth by clicking uh, these arrows here. So we can actually see if we expand it, there's inputs, there's text output, and there's plots. And so we can choose what each of those are. So we can actually look here and say that the input is X, is the XY data. And that's from something called profiles. And if we look up here at external sources, we will see that there's a data set called profiles. So that data set of profiles is actually being pulled down into this XY plot. And then we have some settings and then output. We can look at the same thing here with uh, non-compartmental analysis. And we actually have the profiles and then the dosing published men CA are both inputs. One is the main input, one is the dosing input. We'll explain the inputs at a later lecture. But then we take the final parameter pivoted table that comes out that's one of the results and that feeds into our descriptive statistics and we see that it feeds into is the main input for descriptive statistics. And then we have some output of statistics. So you can see where the data flow is for all of these, these objects. So this is the workflow or workspace. You can also look at a setup, which allows to set up each of those uh, different objects. You can see the results and then some verifications. So it's also as we showed the history was blank. Now we have the history. We can see that it was built uh, or the user was built. The object name was workflow. It was created. And there the date it was created. As we make changes, those changes are recorded here in the history. Now, another way to interact with these objects here, instead of uh, clicking through these, which I think can get cumbersome and tiring and uh, can also take up a lot of space and room is um, to click over here. So if I want to look at the XY plot, I actually just click on the XY plot. And now the XY plot pulls up in this window instead of the workplace. And here's the setup, the results, and the verification for that XY plot. And so I can see everything about it and how to set up that XY plot. What the results are, you can see there's two pages of uh, plots here and then any verifications so it, it validated and it worked correctly if there's errors they'll show up here and now if I want to look at the NCA object I can do the same thing so there's a setup of results and a verification and finally there's descriptive statistics exactly the same thing if I want to go back to the workflow I can go back there so see I can easily move between these objects and access the objects with this browser on the left which is my preferred way to work Another way is if you double click on the XY plot, then it'll open it up in a new window that you can see here. Then you can now access the setups, the results, and the verification within a window. Now my preference is not to use this because I will work over here. Maybe I will start to make a change, make it back, and then I'll come over here. And then what I have is 
where, where did that go? And so I prefer, uh, to simply work here at XY plot and, and work at this point. Now, an interesting thing is you can see the workflow turned red and XY plot turned red. The red text means that it is changed and it hasn't been executed yet. And, uh, so that means that it is not current. The blue means that it is current. And so if perhaps I want to execute this XY plot and make it current, I would hit the execute button. It would execute. And then if we come back to the workflow, we see it's gone to blue. And then the text here is gone to black. Now, again, we can resize these as we need them. We can even resize them uh, within here as we need them, as we need room to do and, and understand what we want. So there's a few other features uh, that I'll show you here on the object browser. There's three buttons up here. This is uh, this button is for the sources. So what it shows is what the sources are and then where they work. So if you remember, we originally looked on these workflow and I had to kind of drag these things around and expand them. Instead of doing that, I find it easier to look at the sources. I go to my XY plot and what are the sources? And I can see here, let me widen this out. I can see here that uh, the data from multiple prof multiple profiles is uh, what I'm, it's coming from this data source here. And that profiles is called data multiple profiles. Now, if I look at non-compartmental analysis, I can see that there's two different sources uh, there and two pieces that are going into it, the profiles and then the dosing from published. In descriptive stats, I can see that it's coming from non-compartmental analysis. And so that's the source. Now, another, so that's the sources button. Another useful thing is the uh, dependence. So there's only one with dependence, and we can see that the descriptive stats uh, are dependent upon the NCA. And so NCA output goes into descriptive stats. So you can look at sources and dependence if you'd like there. And then the final piece is uh, a, an option for a template. Um, and we'll do templates later, so we won't discuss them now, but that's exactly, uh, that allows you to create templates. So this is an introduction to uh, Phoenix and the, the platform and some of the pieces of it. And in the subsequent lectures, we'll teach you how to uh, build your own projects and interact with these objects and make them work for you. Thank you very much, and, and uh, we'll see you at the next lecture.